Good morning, everyone. And thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this morning. Apologies, I'm not with you live, but I hope you're having an uh, enjoyable conference. And thank you to the Francis and the BNF team for the opportunity to speak with you. So my name is Colin Smith. I'm Industry Development Manager with LMC. And I wanted to speak with you on a topic today around understanding sustainability from a red meat, Northern Ireland red meat industry perspective. So hopefully you're familiar with some of the work that LMC does through our cookery demonstrations and, and possibly our farm quality assurance scheme as well and our other activities. But today, as I say, we want to focus on, on the area of sustainability. And I know it's something that comes up on the A-level syllabus. And I, I suppose, started by trying to define food sustainability, looking at its constituent parts. First of all, food in the Oxford Dictionary being defined as any nutritious substance that people or animals eat or drink or that plants absorb in order to maintain life and growth. And then sustainability as the ability to be maintained at a certain rate or level, or avoidance of the depletion of natural resources in order to maintain an ecological balance. And then combining those, so food sustainability could be then described as adopting practices to produce a nutritious substance that people or animals eat that will avoid depletion of natural resources. So put simply, producing food in a way that ensures it will not run out either now or at some point in the future. And whilst climate and environmental sustainability grabs the headlines, there are three pillars of sustainability, economic, environment, environmental and social sustainability. And they're all closely linked and important. And I want to touch on all three of those whilst we'll discuss a lot of the elements around environment in particular. So then starting with environmental um, sustainability, and I suppose our, the role of, of food within that, thinking at a global level, we have targets around emissions. And that starts globally with the Paris Agreement, trying to limit global warming to well below two degrees. And then there's legislation closer to home. So in the UK, it was one of the first climate change acts, or one of the early climate change acts established in 2008. And then more recently within Northern Ireland, MLAs established the Climate Change Act in, in 2022. And I've just noted on the slide for you the specific targets under that act. And I just would draw your attention then to the third one on that list. And it should become a little bit more clear in that there are different greenhouse gases and, and they all ultimately should be treated differently because they act differently in the atmosphere. And therefore, methane um, is looked at differently in that we're not looking for a 100% reduction from the baseline, but a 46% reduction. And that is important from an agricultural point of view, which we'll, we'll see. I'd just like to mention that it's not all legislatively driven. The industry and customers of industry driven by their consumers are expecting agriculture and the red meat industry to do their bit to reduce emissions as well. So I suppose it's a, a dual track, dual purpose work that we, we're, we're doing to try and reduce emissions within the agricultural sector. And I guess the slide on certainly on the left hand side makes it clear as why we have to do that. Agriculture contributes 26% to the Northern Ireland greenhouse gas emissions, certainly as, as as you can see in 2019. And that's the highest amongst the sector, sectors listed on the screen. And that essentially, in Northern Ireland, the emissions profile reflects the economic importance of the agri-food sector in agriculture, as it is, the it is the largest source sector of greenhouse gas emissions, as I say, at 26%. But ultimately, because it is such a significant part of our economic makeup here in Northern Ireland is a significantly and large industry and the largest manufacturing industry in Northern Ireland. On the right hand side, then, I think it's important just to note that whilst a lot of focus is on carbon and other industries, the proportion of carbon in terms of their emissions would be significantly higher. Within ag agriculture, you can see that methane is the, the highest I suppose, emitter in terms of um, greenhouse gases. And that's ultimately because in livestock farming, emissions from, from the animal cannot be avoided. 
Cattle and sheep emit methane as part of a natural biological process as bacteria breaks down cellulose in their diet and as they eat grass and therefore producing milk and meat from our grasslands. Methane is a short-lived greenhouse gas. It operates differently than carbon dioxide and as I mentioned earlier, it should be treated differently to carbon dioxide. And what's important to note is that smaller reductions in methane can have a big impact on global warming as it's a very potent gas and hence the specific NI targets that have, have set a 46% reduction for methane as opposed to, to 100%. So whilst that all might, might be slightly complex, it's just to make clear that there are different greenhouse gases and they need to be treated differently. So for agriculture, ultimately, uh, for us, it's a balancing act. On one side, I, as I mentioned, this is a critically important industry north to Northern Ireland. It, you know, produces almost five billion pounds of, of, of um, contributes five five billion pounds worth to the Northern Ireland economy, and employs over in and around sorry one hundred and thirteen thousand jobs in Northern Ireland. So you can see how significant that is. We can produce in Northern Ireland enough food to feed ten million people in the UK and, and, and further afield. And that's important because you can see on the right hand side that population, as we all know, will continue to rise. In 2021, there was 820 million people suffering from hunger and that's not sustainable. So agricultural production needs to increase to meet this, this demand for food. And ultimately the area for food production is decreasing. So what do we do? How can we be be sustainable. Whilst agriculture is emitting greenhouse gases, it's critical to feeding our people. So sustainability is complex. It's a balancing act and all of these things need to be considered. What I will say is that agriculture, whilst it is an emitter of greenhouse gases, it is unique in its opportunity to also be part of the solution to climate change. And whilst the wording on the graphic is small, I apologize for that. It is simply to indicate graphically that agriculture through sequestration of carbon can act as a carbon sink. So ultimately, as we grow food, grow crops, grow grass for animals to eat through photosynthesis, carbon is being sequestered. It's being absorbed, let's say, into our land, into our soils and stored there. So if we manage our agriculture production with carbon in mind, we can be part of the solution in offsetting those emissions that we discussed earlier, not just from agriculture, but from, from all of the other sectors. And I think, again, that's important to note. So again, I know this is part of the, the syllabus in terms of, I suppose, environmental claims and you know, are those important to consumer decisions? So I just want to touch on this and not read all of these stats, but just maybe pick a couple of them that 50% of millennials in Ireland believe that they're accountable for protecting the environment. And in the US, 70% of US consumers consider sustainability when shopping for food. So we can see sustainability is an important consideration for consumers. But sometimes I wonder myself, do they understand the depth and complexity around sustainability, its definition and all of the things that we've just discussed? Is sustainability a growing concern? Well, Kantar, that where this information came from, certainly looking at a percentage change from 2018 to, or 2014 to 2018, saw a 14% increase in the percentage of the population in Western Europe who agree that they avoid products harmful to the environment. So we can see that sustainability is a concern for consumers and maybe becoming more so. Now, whether that's uh, exactly true within Northern Ireland specifically, but we can see that in Western Europe that, that certainly looks to be the case. So how do consumers then make decisions? And you know what do they look for whenever they are sourcing their protein, and in our case, beef and lamb? And we know through the work that our marketing communications manager, Lauren Patterson, does, is that there's a there is a very, very strong recognition of our FQS logo and 
Ultimately, I'm not going to go into all the detail of FQIS today, but our Farm Quality Assurance Scheme is a logo that we use on PAC to represent the standards of production that our farmers meet day and daily. And we have an independently accredited body to go out and inspect those standards. And more available, more information is available on all of that if it's useful for, for you and other elements of the syllabus on our website and the link is there. But does FQS represent a sustainable choice? Oh, absolutely, yes. From my point of view, it, it absolutely does. And I say that because you can see on the screen some of the stats that, that we have available to, the, to us is that beef production in Western Europe is currently two and a half times more efficient in managing carbon emissions than the global average. The dairy industry, from which over 40% of our beef comes from, in Northern Ireland has reduced its carbon intensity by 37% between 1990 and 2020. And greenhouse gas emissions from beef production in the UK are 52% lower than the global average. So I think as you can see is that when you choose local, you're choosing a carbon efficient product and a sustainable product compared to if ultimately the government said we'll plant trees in Northern Ireland and we'll just import our food from somewhere else, that is essentially exporting the problem because we know that other countries in the world aren't as efficient as us at doing it. And um, ultimately they don't have the regulation and the stringent rules that apply here. And therefore by importing that produce, you're essentially supporting a, a production base that is more harmful to the environment. And I think that's where carbon leakage comes in. And that, that's essentially what that is. And if I have a definition there on the screen. It's maybe something that you can discuss in the classroom with your with your students. But, um, you know, as we said earlier, we, we have targets to hit as an industry. Are, are we sustainable compared to our global competitors? Absolutely, we are. Do we strive to do more as an industry? Yes, we do. And part of that. Um, mission for us ultimate, ultimately in in the Beef and Lamb Farm Quality Assurance Scheme is to evidence our claims, to gather evidence to to support the claims that we're making. I suppose it's no longer consumers want more than saying that we're sustainable, we need to prove it. And what we're doing is kicking off a project in the coming months to efficiently capture information from FQS farms to determine our net greenhouse gas emissions right down to farm level and and then in return highlight areas where changes can be made that when implemented will reduce net emissions. So while I go into all of this in detail, this graphic ultimately outlines that we will be taking information from robust government databases such as the APHIS information which holds all of our information on cattle. We'll be taking information from farm that's been collected by an independently accredited body. We'll be putting that through a carbon calculator that meets all of the required assurance standards and providing a footprint at farm level for our farmers. And what it does is it allows our farmers to go on an individual farm business journey of improvement. It gives them a baseline on their carbon footprint and it allows them to improve from that point. So we are serious about hitting our targets as an industry. We know we are a sustainable industry, but we seek to prove that and improve where we are at this point in time. And that assists government on their targets from a legislative point of view. And it also assists industry in, I suppose, marketing their product to, to consumers. But I suppose I want to make clear that this is about individual businesses improving rather than necessarily using this for international benchmarking because there are many carbon calculators out there. So comparing one to another is, is certainly not ideal. And therefore, this is an individual business improvement piece. So I've talked a lot about environmental sustainability, the driver behind that for our industry from a global point of view, from Target's point of view. But what I want to say is that, you know, I touched on at the start, the three pillars of sustainability are broader than the environment and climate change alone. 
And within that environmental pillar, they also cover things like biodiversity, water quality, air quality, soil health, animal health. And our scheme, our FQS scheme, the logo that we have, has standards on all of those things. And we seek to be to be broader than than just the kind of reducing our emissions, but seek to address all of these standards uh, and to protect and enhance the, the environment by setting a minimum standards in all of these areas. So I'd like to move on just to touch on economic sustainability. I said uh, in earlier slides that agriculture is a significant contributor to the Northern Ireland economy. As I said, just under five billion pounds with a significant workforce behind that. So as we can see, the supply chain, the food sector supply chain as a whole is economically sustainable. But I just want to highlight right down at, at farm business level, any of you who have relations that are farmers and may possibly cattle and sheep farmers will know that it is challenging without government support. So economic sustainability, just as a definition, involves using the assorted assets of the company efficiently to allow it to continue function, functioning profitably over time. And in Northern Ireland in 2021, cattle and sheep farms without direct support from the government, their average farm business income was minus £8,430. So it would be wrong for me to say that without government support, that they were economically sustainable. But with that government support, it certainly um, assists them to be more sustainable economically or economically sustainable, forgive me. But in return for that payment, they then have to meet all of the government standards in terms of environmental standards, animal health standard, standards, animal welfare standard, standards, um, feed, um, feed standards. There, there's a significant number of standards that then farmers have to meet to receive that payment. But I just wanted to touch on that element of, of economic sustainability. The last element I suppose I want to touch on is social sustainability and which primary producers of food tend to work in small family run farm businesses. The processing sector represent is, represents, as I've touched on, the largest manufacturing employer in Northern Ireland. Each employee working in this sector is protected by stringent regulations governing rights of employees. So. This includes health, safety regulations, working time regulations, statutory sick pay, paid holiday, living wage. So these rights are afforded to UK citizens. However, this legislation doesn't necessarily apply to other countries around the world. Working conditions and ethics in some businesses are extremely poor in other, other countries globally. But food produced under the FQS logo guarantees that that product has been produced to these standards. The same cannot be said for imported produce. So social sustainability, it's about the well-being of people and communities. It's about a thriving community with equitable policies and diverse populations working and living together. And purchasing FKS products helps to fuel social sustainability by giving back to rural communities and supporting a production base that is governed by strict policies that protect the interests of the people that work in Northern Ireland. And that's not necessarily true if you were to pick up a produce product, beef and lamb from other countries. So I think I just wanted to show you that all of those three elements of sustainability come together, but they come together and can be represented by the FQS logo that we use on PAC. So to conclude, folks, three pillars of sustainability are all important. Northern Ireland agriculture must strike a balance between efficient food food production to feed a growing population and also meeting the climate change targets because as i mentioned from a biological process we are emitters of methane particularly and we have to try and and are acting to reduce those emissions fqs contributes to food sustainability by delivering minimum standards and i touched on those all based around all three pillars not just around climate change. So buying local is a sustainable choice. 
The FKS logo lets consumers know that food has been produced to designated standards, which is important. They're independently accredited. You can trust the claims that we're making. Northern Ireland has government policies in place that contribute to sustainability, and these will only continue to evolve um, as targets need to be met. And production of food in Northern Ireland is done responsibly and recognises the need for efficient and profitable food businesses that complement the natural environment and deliver benefits for people and their communities. So folks, I'll stop there. Um, I hope some of the information has been useful to you, if not all. Uh, if you want more information, um, please get in contact with BNF and they can pass on Lauren's details um, and we can get uh, you any information hopefully you, you need. But I hope that um, the rest of the, of the conference goes well and I will uh, at this point say goodbye and thank you.